بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه واتبع هداه وبعد. So welcome to this new class on the spiritual reading of the Quran. Uh, this might be something new introduced in the masajid, but it's very important. Imagine that you received two letters, one from a beloved dear friend talking to you about um, a special message to you, and then another letter from a company talking to you about some instructions on a new device. Would you read these two letters in the same way, or you read them differently? In the first case, you will read the letter with more passion, more reverence. It will be more heartfelt than the second one, because the first one comes from someone that you consider dear. And some of the words of the letters may resonate with your heart, and you may even need to repeat them. You may finish the letter and then go back and read the same letter over and over again because some words are resonating with you. When you read the second letter, you can read it with interest, but it will not be as heartfelt as the first one. So when we talk about spiritual reading of the Quran, do you expect that reading to belong to the first category or the second category? Huh? The first category. So when we talk about spiritual reading of the Quran, it assumes that you hold the, the speaker in reverence, that this will, you will be dealing with your heart about this message, and that you will be seeking something beyond the information. So spiritual reading is not about information, but it's more about formation. And this is what we will be focusing on inshallah in this whole class it's not information that we're looking for when we're reading the quran for spiritual purposes we're looking for the formation could the quran form us so the spiritual reading means that you will be meditating on the quranic text so that you will be newly formed this is what we mean by the spiritual reading why do you think the Qur'an was revealed? Do you know that the Qur'an is revealed so that you meditate on it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ This book, we revealed it to you as a blessed book, so that they ponder and meditate on its ayat, on its verses. And so that people of reasoning would reflect on it or remember it. So the Quran is originally revealed so that you would be meditating on it. What does the word meditation in Arabic here as far as our relationship with the Quran is concerned? The word for, the, for meditation in Arabic is tadabbur. What is tadabbur? This word comes from the ta, da, or ta, ba, da, ba, and ra. And it means another fi awaqid al umur. The origin of this word means examining the end result of something examining the outcome of something or basically the effect of something so the word itself assumes that you're going beyond the written word you're going deeper for the effect for the formation so you will be if you're reading the quran in a meditative way you should expect to be shaped by the quran and formed by the quran that is why if you're not doing Qur'an with, with contemplation, the Qur'an will not benefit you. The Qur'an is revealed so that you contemplate and meditate on it. And if you're not doing, dealing with it in this way, you will not benefit from the Qur'an. So, 
The second thing we know about the word tadabbur, so tadabbur comes from the dalba and ra, and it means examining the end result of something. And it also, it has the pattern of tafa'ul, and tafa'ul in Arabic indicates the, the action is repeated, and it is done with some effort. So again, the word indicates that you're looking for something beyond the written form, and it is something that becomes daily intake, and it becomes done with effort. So you exert your utmost effort, because this is how you benefit from uh, the Quran. You might say, but are you really serious when you're saying the Quran will shape me, will form me? There is more than 14 centuries gap between me and the Quran. How would the Quran relate to me today? And my answer to this is to get to recognize the Quran self image. The first thing we know about the Quran is that it is ruh. The first description in the, about the Quran is that it is ruh. What is ruh? It's basically a spirit. The Quran is originally a spirit. And the reason why it is called ruh in the Quran is because it gives life to the hearts. If the ruh is what gives life to the bodies, the Quran is what gives life to the hearts. So it's not about how old the Quran is. The purpose of the Quran is to communicate that spirit from Allah to you. And that is not affected by time. Because that spirit is always preserved. So it gives life to the, to, to the heart as ruh gives life to the bodies. As Imam al-Zarqashi ta'ala said. Also the Prophet وسلم, illustrated this idea and said the Quran is like a rope extending from heaven to the earth. So you're connected with your original home when you're connected with the Quran. And the Prophet وسلم, also said uh, about the Quran that in the Quran sabab, that this Quran is a rope. One end of it is in, within the hands of Allah and another end is within your hands. If you hold fast to this rope, you will never be misguided. So this is the first reason why the Quran relates to us today. The second reason why the Quran relates to us is because the Quran is considered as, as a source of hidayah, hudan. It's a source of guidance. And that is not about time. That is not affected by time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the Quran yahdi aqwam. This book, the Quran, guides to that which is which is better, which is straight. This Quran also Yazid al Iman. This Quran increases our Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when the verses of the Quran are revealed, it increases people's Iman. So the class for today is more an, as an introduction to this whole course, and we'll introduce this idea of tadabbur, and what are we looking for. And I will stick to what I promised. We're talking about keys. And we'll start with the first key, inshallah, next week. But I'll give you the list of the keys that we'll be dealing with tonight, inshallah, so that next week we'll start with the first one and start this, uh, this process. Also, the Quran is uh, the source of healing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, qad ja'atkum maw'idatum min rabbikum wa shifa'un lima fi sudur Oh people, there has come to you a warning from your Lord and healing for that which is in the, in the hearts. And guidance and mercy for the believers. Also the Quran talks about itself as increasing, as strengthening your Iman. So it gives Iman and it strengthens Iman. To, uh, so the Holy Spirit brought it down from your Lord to strengthen those who believe. 
The Quran also is not only a source of guidance and formation, it's a source of actual transformation of the hearts. Listen to this ayah and see why it does that and it does not change your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَى جَبَلْ If we had revealed or sent down this Qur'an on a mountain, لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا You would have seen it humbled. مُتَصَدِّعًا Coming apart مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ Due to the reverent fear of Allah. وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ These are the examples we set for people so that they remember. So if the Qur'an could do that with the mountains, why is it not humbling our hearts? We'll see the reason is because we're not giving enough attention to this art of meditating on the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also describes some people uh, those who were giving knowledge before it, when the Quran is recited to them, what is their reaction? They fall on their faces in prostration, weeping, and they say, Holy be our Lord. Indeed, the promise of our Lord has been fulfilled. And also increases their humility. So if it is doing all of this, what went wrong? What went wrong? And the answer is, many of us are not reading the Quran. And for those who are reading the Quran, they do not meditate on it or contemplate on it. Why? People could say, well, why? because I am not qualified. I'm not qualified to read the Qur'an in a meditative way as you're suggesting and reaching meanings beyond the written form. And let me tell you something. This is a confession. There are many scholars who cannot even read the Qur'an in a meditative way. Just because you have the tools does not necessarily mean that you can uh, understand and uh, read the Qur'an in a meditative way and benefit from it. Tadabbur is like an independent branch of knowledge that scholars and non-scholars need to train themselves in. Tadabbur is more making your heart available for the Qur'an to change it. The goal of Tadabbur is not to go through the Qur'an, but is to let the Qur'an go through our hearts. And there are some keys that we'll learn uh, to emphasize this idea. And this is the reason why we have this whole uh, class, inshallah. We'll have it in eight weeks, so it will not be that long. And uh, as I said, we'll have the outline for the coming classes, inshallah, tonight. As one of the poets says, وَمِنَ الْعَجَائِبِ وَالْعَجَائِبُ جَمَّةٌ One of the wonders, and the wonders are so many, قُرْبُ الْحَبِيبِ وَمَا إِلَيْهِ وصوله, Is that sometimes the beloved is so near and yet so far. And it's like the camels in the desert suffering from thirst. And water is already loaded on its backs. And this is what we do. This is exactly our case with the Quran. You have a book that is ruh, that is guidance, that is healing, that is a source of increasing our iman, and still we're suffering from the lack of all of these like the camels, suffering from thirst, and they are actually carrying the water on their backs. So the, the purpose of this whole uh, journey is to revive and reclaim that lost art of meditating in the Quran. You will be amazed and surprised of, uh, of, of the value of meditating in the Quran. And you will get to know that it does not require the experience and the qualifications you may think of. It, it just needs that we need to be trained on these keys. And you will get a sense of what keys uh, I am referring to. Second, some people would say, 
I cannot meditate on the Quran because the Quran is a legal text. It's concerned more about the laws. And that is a myth. 90% of the Quran, 90, has nothing to do with laws. 90% of the Quran has nothing to do to deal with law with laws. Only less than 9%, less than 9% deals with laws. 75% or 65% of the 9% are actually laws related to acts of worship. So like purity, like salah, like fasting, like hajj, like oath. So the idea of being uh, uh, disregarding the, uh, of the discipline of, the, of meditating on the Quran because it is illegal text, that's not true. So let's move directly to, okay now, we'll draw the road map for the, for the coming classes. So that we'll go in step by step in an organized manner. So we need two things now. We need to learn about how to prepare the heart for contemplating on the Quran, and the second, what are the keys that we need for this journey? So these are the things we'll cover uh, tonight, inshallah. So we'll talk about preparation, how I prepare my heart to read the Quran in a meditative way, and the second is more about the keys. Remember the first example I gave, if you're reading a letter by a beloved person or a dear person, and you're reading a letter from a company, the big difference is that of attitude and the manner of reading it. The way you read the first letter is absolutely different from... So we'll talk here about the attitude. If you really want to benefit from the Quran, there has to be preparations. And then there has to be things that you're looking for. You're not looking for information. You're not looking for grammatical solutions. You're looking for formation. How can the Quran form me and shape me? And we'll have some keys here that uh, you will have a chance to examine. So that when it comes to the preparation, exactly as you're reading a letter from a beloved, you read it with a humble heart. So you need a humble, responsive heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Quran, in this Quran there is a reminder for those who have a heart. If you do not approach the Qur'an with a humble heart, you will not be guaranteed guidance. Actually, the Qur'an could misguide you if you're approaching it in an arrogant way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, سَأَصْرِفُ عَنْ آيَاتِيَ الَّذِينَ يَتَكَبَّرُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ I'll turn my signs away from those who behave arrogantly on earth. So the first way to approach the Qur'an is to approach it with a humble heart. And the second, to approach it with an attentive mind. The ayah we said, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرَ لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبِ Indeed, there is a reminder in this for those who have heart. The rest says, أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْعَ وَهُوَ شَهِيد Or they listen attentively. As I said, exactly in the same way you're reading a letter from a beloved. And third, you read it in an unhurried, with unhurried time. As you would read that letter in a quiet room, sometimes you read it alone, you need to set time aside. I know that the, the modern culture is all about noise and crowds, so you need to quiet your heart and get ready for this. And I have some other recommendations that we can add here. The first one is that contemplation should be done daily. 
should be done daily. You know, some people from other religions, they criticize Islam for being like more concerned about legal issues. They say it is legalistic. You're praying five times a day. It's all about love. And, but we pray five times a day as a form of discipline. Have you ever seen anyone criticizing people for eating three times a day? You eat three times a day because because you want to feed your body to meet the needs of your body. So you pray five times a day to meet the needs of your spiritual life, of your heart. So now we need that daily intake of the Quran because we need guidance daily, because the heart needs to be connected with Allah daily. That's why we need this daily intake of the Quran. And we should understand that here we're not concerned about how much. In contemplation, we're concerned about how, how we read it, not how much we read. So you could be reading only a small passage, three ayat, five ayat, and starting from next week, you will get an idea of what I'm going, to, of what we're talking about. But I, I have this mindset of organizing things and introducing things. Usually people come in the first class, khalas, this is, I, I expected to know the keys. Now you, we, we need to organize first in a logical way uh, so that we were moving uh, more logically. So the first thing is to read it on a daily basis. It could be one passage as we'll see starting from next week, inshallah. The second, you pray for insight. Make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides your heart. It could be 10 minutes. And again, we'll see examples and we'll practice these examples uh, starting from next week. Uh, you, you would, we, uh, number three, we have, we could meditate on short passages. And number four, uh, quitting sins, quitting sins is number four. As Ibn Ata'illah says, كَيْفَ يُشْرِقُ قَلْبٌ صُوَرُ الْأَكْوَالِ مُنْطَبِعَةٌ فِي مِرْآدٍ How a heart would illuminate and the forms of, of the universe are reflected in its mirror. That mirror is not pure, it will not reflect what Allah is the guidance that Allah communicates with you because it is busy with these images of the dunya. So that mirror needs to be polished first so clearly and purely that the guidance of Allah would be reflected in our hearts. And he said, How could that heart journey to Allah and it is shackled with its sins and desires? So we need to liberate ourselves by having this tawbah, at least for the sake of reading the Quran, because we expect it to transform you too. So we do not want to fall into this uh, uh, problem of a dawr. The last point here is uh, setting time for tadabbur. So that is number four. Number five, setting time for tadabbur. It could be 10 minutes after Maghrib. Uh, I would say do not do it before you sleep because you will be sleepy anyway. So do it at a time when you feel your heart is responsive. Type, let's move to the main part. All of what I said are necessary introductions. So what do you mean by the keys? What are these things we're looking for when we're reading the Quran? If we're not looking for meaning, if we're not looking for making a commentary on the Quran, why are we reading it? So I have eight, uh, I have eight keys that I'll share with you, and inshallah next week we'll start with the first one, just to keep this one focused as an introduction. The first one is that we read the Quran to capture the awe of Allah.
And the Quran is a unique and great book to instill the awe of Allah in your heart. And once this is done, Allah, you're fine. You started your real journey to Allah. When you have ta'zim Allah in your heart, when Allah is glorified in your heart, you're, you're, you're there. What is in the Quran that would help us capture the awe of Allah? We'll discuss that next, uh, next week with examples. One of these is, uh, as we'll cover next week, is that when we contemplate on the word, when we contemplate on the world, when we contemplate <coughs> on the attributes of Allah. What do you mean by the word? There is one significant feature in the Quran that is not shared by other books, which is that the Quran is considered to be the direct speech of Allah. So in many positions in the Quran, you would see Allah speaking, saying, we did this. I command you to do this. That should fill the heart of the awe of Allah. And you will see examples. People who are saying Muhammad is the author of the Quran, how could Muhammad play the role of God? This is something that no sane person could ever try. I cannot say to you, I am God, worship me. You will get me to a, the closest mental hospital. Because that doesn't make sense. Who could have the courage to say, we created the heavens and the earth? And we'll talk about that style. But we need to meditate in that style and, not, and capture it. And give time for our hearts to, to let that meaning sink in our hearts. And you will see the transformation and the change. And you will start reading the Quran differently, noticing things that you didn't notice before. You see also the signs of Allah in nature. So many ayat called signs. Also, uh, the same word like ayat. So ayat could refer to the verse in the Quran, and it could refer to the signs of Allah in the universe. Like the creation of the mountains, uh, the heaven, the earth, rain, wind. All of these are signs. That's why I always say that the Arabic language uh, can never be uh, can never uh, be an atheistic language. Yani, in the in the beginning of the Quran, you have Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praises are due to Allah, the Lord of the world. What is Al Alameen? The word Alam comes from the word Alama. The word world come from the Arabic word that means alama, sign. So the world is a sign for something else behind it. And that is the metaphysical part of the Arabic language. The word alam means it's actually a sign. A sign for you to reflect on. Uh, you see that with the word nature. What is the word nature in Arabic? Tabi'ah. Tabi what is tabi'ah in Arabic? The word tabi'ah in Arabic means matbu'ah, something made. Right? It's, it's, it's literally something, it's made. So that begs for a maker. So the word itself is not like the word nature. And, and nature would be manshura. So the word tabi'ah uh, cries for a tabi'ah, for someone who's giving it the tabi'ah. So you cannot say, who created this nature? What, what do you mean by nature? What is nature? The sky? The mountains? Uh, the rivers? That is nature. Because nature in itself, there is nothing called nature. Nature is something that refers to many things. There is not one thing that I can point to and say this is nature. This is what created the world. But anyway, and also the attributes of Allah will have examples of the attributes of Allah. And we'll talk about the importance of starting with the awe of Allah in our hearts. Because that is what made the first generation. This is what made the first generation. Because they understood the Quran as the word of Allah. 
and they give it their hearts to change and, and to transform. The second, we read the Quran. So reading the Quran to capture the awe of Allah. Again, you do not need to be a scholar. There is no grammar requirements. You could be a great grammarian, and you do not capture the awe of Allah, and it doesn't benefit you. You got that point? The second is we read the Quran to pray through the ayat. To pray through the ayat. And we'll learn here some examples that the Prophet ﷺ did. He responded by formulating a dua based on an ayah. That is something, so I am reading an ayah, just one ayah. One way of reflecting and meditating on it is just, khalas, I read the ayah, I know the ayah, I can close the mushaf and pray and make up a dua based on this ayah. And we'll talk about that in details, but I'm just giving you an outline of what it looks like if, if you're interested in this kind of material. The third is that we read the Quran we read the Quran to hear Allah's message for us. I mean, this is more a personal message. And we'll have examples. And we'll talk also about, do we have in our Muslim, uh, in our Muslim heritage, do we have scholars who wrote about something like this? Yani they are reading the Quran, waiting to hear Allah's voice, waiting to hear a message for them, a personal message for them through the ayat. We do. We do have many scholars who even have books, and, and they are printed. So we are introduced this kind of genre, inshallah. Number four, reading the Quran for reflecting. To reflect. And we'll give examples on how to reflect, again, without need of grammar. Number five, reading the Quran for memorization. I know people do not prize memorization that much in our time, but we'll talk about the importance of memorizing, not the Quran, because this is not the purpose of the class, but memorizing passages, memorizing ayat, that we can, we can really bring into our memories whenever needed. You face a specific situation, there should be an ayah ready in your mind that, would, that is ready to, to counter any satanic thoughts. So that is the importance of learning from, of memorizing some ayat. And I'll give you also a list of these ayat. Uh, and the purpose of this ayah. So we can read the Quran to, for memorization. Uh, number uh, six, we read the Quran for healing. And we'll also have examples for that, whether physical healing or spiritual healing. We read the Quran for <laughs> practicing. And the last thing, which is number eight, we read the Quran. Um, to get the big picture. And what I mean by this is, here we'll, we'll deal with one complete surah, and we'll try to read the Quran in a holistic way. We read the whole surah as one unit. So these are the eight ways that I was able to, uh, to gather and to create that discipline. Because I don't have books in, in English or in Arabic that simplifies it in this way. I mean, in the forms of peace. Because now you can evaluate yourself. But as many of the books there would just, would just elaborate more on what we mentioned in the beginning. Why tadabur is so important. But the mechanism and how this should be done and examples are usually missing. So inshallah, starting from next week, we'll talk more about capturing the awe of Allah. I, this is a long topic, so I, I wanted to, uh, to dedicate next class for that whole discussion, inshallah. Uh, I would be ready to receive any questions
or any comments or anything you wish to be added as we're starting this uh, new class. Any questions, comments, feedback? So that means you agree or you, or it was not clear? Very good. Time. We're just waiting for next week. <laughs> next week? I have a question. No. So what about the, like, like I'm a non-native speaker, so what about, it's like, well, Arabic is not my first language, like how can I really do the dabbur when like, my vocabulary for like Quranic text is so good. limited? Good, that is a good question. And maybe I should add it to the misconceptions. So we talked about two misconceptions. The first one is, who's writing notes? Huh? The Quran is a legal text, so how can I use it for meditative purposes? What was the I'm first? Yeah. I am not qualified because I am not a scholar. And now there is the language barrier. To your surprise, we're actually reading all in English. I will not bring Arabic text to the class. We'll, we're reading in English because I assume that we do not all master uh, Arabic. So, because again, the purpose is not about information. It's more about formation. And the English translation can shape you, can formulate you spiritually. Because you can capture the awe of Allah in English too. So do not worry about that. We'll have all of the passages, inshallah, in, uh, in English. And I'll try to look for a more um, convenient translation. Now, في حدك and هناك. So, is there a big difference between listening to the Quran or reading the Quran? No, the Quran, the word Quran actually means, suggests that it is something to be recited. So the Quran is originally a recital. The word Quran means a recital, something to be recited. So, now for those who, are, who know Arabic specifically, the power of Arabic and the rhymes in Arabic has so much impact on the heart. There is no doubt about that. And I wish that you guys start listening to the Quran even if you do not understand the meaning. Start listening to it in Arabic even if you do not understand the meaning. Pick one of your favorite uh, reciter and start listening and expose your heart to that uh, new discipline. Can you listen it to it in English? I did not try it. But, uh, when I am talking about tadabbur, I do not mean the whole Qur'an. We'll deal with the passages that would serve our purpose, which is usually most of the Qur'an. But now, you can still hear the Qur'an, but I, for this to work perfectly, it has to be a short passage, especially in the beginning. So if you have a short passage for five or ten minutes that you can really focus on, um, it it's, would be still fine. It's not something you're listening to in your car. We said you need to have unhurried time. You set up time for this, and you give it and you give some effort because this the word tadabbur indicates that you're exerting some effort. Now, is there a difference in ajr between listening and reading? Ahna, we're not here talking about ajr. We're talking about the transformation of the heart. So where do you find your heart more responsive? Reading or listening? If you find your heart more responsive when you hear, خلاص, this is the best for you. If you find it more responsive when you hold the paper and read through the ayat and repeat them, and maybe one word would resonate with your heart, or maybe one ayah stands out from a whole passage, and that becomes your favorite ayah, that, that would be your right way. So we're not here talking about thawab or not. We're not here concerned with reading with, with how much. We're concerned about how. We're concerned about the quality, not the quantity. And many scholars, as will come to explain uh, here, many scholars would say, I would prefer to, to recite or read one surah with contemplation than reading the whole Quran without contemplation. So we do not want to uh, 
to discuss these now. Question. Yeah. Uh, will give us an example of each point, you know, you know information versus formation. Uh, information regarding like uh, how you want to translate or transform your heart from before to the after and control it, right? So no. I had an example through hadith. An example from what? From the ayat, from the Quran, no. and from the hadith. Now we have ex examples from hadith specifically uh, of the Sahaba being captured by the awe of Allah, praying through the ayat. Yani, مثلاً, as simple as, you know, we say, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Where do we get this from? The Prophet ﷺ made that dua of tasbih after Surah Al-Nasr was revealed. It says, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ So the Prophet ﷺ made a dua out of this and he asked for, he said, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, Allahumma ghfir li. So he turned that ayah into a dua. He also turned that ayah from Surah Al-Baqarah into a dua that will come to. But I want you to stay connected to the class. We'll say it will be here uh, in two weeks. <laughs> and Imam al-Razi, I read his whole tafsir and I, and I found uh, seven ayat that he paused and make a dua after these ayat. So now we're reading the Quran for spiritual purposes. I know you did not try this before. It was not introduced before. But that is ayati. The Quran was revealed for that purpose, was revealed for tadabbur. And we did not pause to make up or, or to come up with the rules of tadabbur so that we can uh, really benefit from it. And this is what we'll be doing, inshallah. You will be surprised next week about how beautiful this one is. Because to me, this is the major one. This is the solution to our spiritual life. <coughs> Once the ta'zim of Allah resides in our hearts, your salah is different, your relationship with people is different, your fasting is different. This is the major thing. And this one is responsive. So because of the ta'zim of Allah, you're responding to the ayat. You're here an active participant. You're not just a passive receiver of the ayat. And again, it could be one or two ayat or one short passage. Uh, here you hear Allah's message for you. You could be going through a problem and you read an ayah and there is a message communicated to you through the ayah. And we'll talk about that and examples of scholars who wrote books about this idea. Uh, reflecting. Also, some uh, ways on how to reflect on ayat. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, sometimes we read ayat separately, but when we connect two ayat together, they give us a completely new meaning. Yeah, there is an ayat that says, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Isn't it high time for the believers to have their hearts humbled before the remembrance of Allah, before Allah? And then the next ayah says, Don't you know that Allah gives life to the earth after it became barren? So what would be the connection? If you're reading these two together, what would be the new meaning? That Allah, because it says your heart should be humbled and softened with the dhikr of Allah. If you doubt that, remember that Allah gives life to the earth with that water. And it brings forth these plants. So Allah can also grow your heart in this way. If you think this is impossible for you to be a spiritual person, and receive that transformation. Remember that the barren earth received that transformation too. Through that water and through that wahi and revelation of Allah, Allah can revive and refresh and, uh, and give life to your heart. So again, it's, it's simple ideas because I want, to, uh, uh, I want to have something that we can evaluate.
instead of just saying, wow, mashallah, the Quran can guide you. We, what can we do? Or the Shaykh, mashallah, gave a great lecture. What did he say? I forgot. I don't know. So it's, we'll move from the idea of being impressed to taking away some keys and tools that we can evaluate and work on. And this is ongoing journey. There, 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 there is a kind of tafsir that is just for tadabbur, and it is ishari. They would say this ayah is ishara for this, it's a sign, it's not interpretation. The ayat becomes signs for something that deals with their heart. That is a genre in, in tafsir, way of tafsir. Uh, is wrong, many of it is right. And we said, uh, we talked about memorization, and this is obvious, but we'll talk about that discipline more. Reading the Quran for healing, uh, reading the Quran for practicing, and having an example of reading a surah as a whole. So when we have these tools, inshallah, it will change the way we look at the Quran. And you will deal with the Quran as something that transforms your heart as a source of guidance and this could help you focus on your salah because people say teach me how to do khushu'a khushu'a starts long before salah it starts long before salah when you have the, the, the heart that, that is qualified for khushu'a you need to prepare that heart first before salah so reading the Quran in a meditative way is one of these ways. Inshallah, we'll see you uh, next week at 7 sharp. And thank you for making the message part of your day. And make sure you get your notebooks and, and take your notes, inshallah.